I'm Artist Wodehouse, and I'm here in Shelburne, Vermont, and I happened to run across a rather extraordinary uh, instrument in a place called the Consignment Center, Furniture Consignment Center, and it's located both in Shelburne and Williston, Vermont. The, the instrument I found is an 1851, apparently, uh, Broadwood grand piano that measures eight feet, two inches long. It's a straight strung piano. And what makes it very distinctive is this beautiful veneer. You see other instruments of this vintage online that have mahogany, but I've never seen anything of this, this beauty. I'm not really sure what the veneer is, but it's, it's quite beautiful. And there's some decorative features on each side of it that are called a pie crust. And this, uh, this instrument is actually early Victorian, uh, so it's not really fancy case, but it has some decorative features. And also, what's interesting is it has wooden uh, foot pedals, which uh, a modern piano will have brass. And that was a characteristic feature of the Broadwood of this period. Now, the other thing that was uh, that's uh, true of this instrument, it's not the size of a modern piano. It has what you call six octaves. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's, there's basic five white notes and three black notes additional. And that's shorter than a modern piano. A modern piano will go all the way up another four notes down up here and another three notes down here. So it's... It's smaller than a, uh, a modern piano, but uh, by 1850 period, uh, this really was the standard size, um, and it was the instrument, the size that Chopin wrote his music for. Now, the reason this instrument is so interesting to me to find here is that I knew when Chopin, whose dates are 1810 to 1848, was in the last year of his life, he went to England. And when he was in England, he was provided with instruments just like this for his performances. And all of his music fit right on this compass of this instrument. So it was the right instrument for him in England. Uh, now, Broadwood is an English brand piano, and Chopin was French, Polish French, and he actually preferred French instruments. Play L was his favorite. But when he went to England, of course, he was going to play an English piano, and that's what he did. Now, now the, the Broadwood piano is really much more directly associated with Beethoven, because Broadwood was one of the leading innovators of piano design starting roughly around 1800. And what, what Broadwood did was they made a much sturdier uh, piano that had a more powerful action. And that, as opposed to the German instruments that were commonly used by Beethoven, Haydn, Mozart. And so Broadwood in 1817, 1818, provided Beethoven with a, an instrument that uh, was the height of the technology of the period. And it only had six octaves, which was from here to here. Nevertheless, that was considered the, the most powerful kind of an instrument for that period. And that's when Beethoven wrote his grand last sonatas and the Diabelle variations. And uh, so this Broadwood became associated very directly with Beethoven's name, and not Chopin's per se. Nevertheless, the point was that Broadwood was one of the, the great instrument makers of this period. Now, what you notice also about this, uh, this uh, Broadwood, this 1851 Broadwood, is what you call a straight strung. In other words, it, the strings go directly back. Now, when you get into the modern period with Steinway, they did cross stringing so that they would be able to get the strings over the, the soundboard to get maximum sound, and also was a much more efficient use of the space. Nevertheless, this style of straight stringing really went into Europe and well into the 1880s. Now, the other thing that Broadwood has here uh, in this instrument is metal bracing. Now, in the time of Beethoven, everything was made of wood, but as, 
as there was a desire for greater sound, as there was a desire for larger uh, compass of notes, the tension on the strings grew greater and the instrument builders had to install metal bracing. And there were a number of ways that this was gone about. Uh, you'll notice from my, my previous video on the chickerings, uh, the Americans came up with a full metal frame that surrounded the entire interior of the piano. Now Broadwood in 1851 was not doing that, at least not yet, but they did have these bolted metal frames that you can see here's running one, here's running another one, there's a, a flat sheet of metal here that it's bolted to, and this is just there in order to prevent the piano from warping, turning in on itself because the strings have a great tension on them and they pull the wood, so you have to hold the instrument strong. So that's pretty much it about this instrument. and. Uh, what I will do is just play a little on it. Look at how this uh, music desk comes up. It's very charming. Um, and what they did was they had this so that so to, to hold the the uh, pages of a book, and that's not something you see very much on a modern piano today.